Hey everyone, Pastor Kenneth here and I hope you're doing well. So here's the question, have you ever thought to yourself, I've tried praying and I just feel like I'm talking to the ceiling. I don't really, I'm not experiencing anything. I just don't feel God. I wanna know how to pray. Have you ever thought that? I know I have thought that personally in my life. And here's the good news. Jesus actually answers that question for us in the Bible. One of his disciples came to him and said, Hey, Jesus, would you teach me how to pray? And Jesus responded by saying this. This is the Lord's prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. And he said this. He said, when you pray, pray like this. He said, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. That comes from Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. Now, there are some people that will just pray that prayer over and over and over again. They go, okay, Jesus said to pray like this. I'm going to just repeat that prayer. And they memorize it and they just pray it over and over and over again. They might say, I'm going to pray this 10 times tonight before I go to bed. And I really prayed. Does that really, is that really what Jesus meant when he said, when you pray, pray like this? So what was he saying with this Lord's prayer? And actually it's more of the disciples prayer because Jesus already knew how to pray. And they, and they said, teach us how to pray. And Jesus said, pray like this. So he's teaching the disciples to pray. So really this is a, the disciples prayer. We call it the Lord's prayer because that's what tradition is usually called it. So this Lord's prayer is not just a single prayer that we pray, it's a journey that we take okay now you might be thinking what do you mean by journey there's actually seven things that jesus says in this prayer seven steps that we can take when we pray in our personal prayer okay so here it is the first one he says this it says our father in heaven this is when we connect with god you know before we go to god and just start maybe saying our problems or praying for something else or whatever it is make that connection in your heart with god god you are the father you are you know i am your son make you know you can start praying things like that just so that we're getting in this mindset and our spirit is connecting with god so the first thing is our father in heaven identifying that we are his children and that we are entering into this relationship this discussion with him in prayer as children of god the second thing he says is hallowed be your name now what does that hallowed mean that's like an old ling english word for saying holy is your name and so at this point we're basically we're worshiping god we're taking a couple seconds just to say god you are good you are awesome we're i'm praising you right now so we say we come into our, our, our relationship with god and then we praise his name and what we're doing here is we're tilling the soil you know before you plant a seed you've got to kind of till up the soil that's what is happening at this part of the prayer then he says this your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven and this is when we're praying god's will god's desires and we're putting those things above our desires so we come in and when we say god i'm just asking for your will to be done i'm asking for in my life for what you want to happen to happen in my life for this country for what you want to happen to happen in this country in this church for what you want to happen to happen or we're relinquishing our control to god and we're saying what you have to say is more important than what i have to say and again we're connecting with god as the father the one that's looking out for us more than we could even look out for ourselves and the next thing he says is give us this day our daily bread and this is where we trust and depend on god for everything you know for for us in the united states most of us have not spent more than a day or so without eating but think about it you have to eat every single day the bread that you're eating gives you sustenance you cannot live without bread you cannot live and bread is meaning food you can't live without food so basically he's saying give us this day our daily bread feed me today god I'm putting all of my dependence on you. I'm trusting in you 100%. I'm putting all my trust in you. And then he says the fifth thing, he says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And this is where we get right in our hearts. This is where we make ourselves 
right with God. There's always something in our lives that we didn't do correctly. There's always something that we could say, you know what? That wasn't the way that God wanted me to handle that situation. God, I need you to forgive me for that. I need you to, to, I need to be in right relationship with you. I want to come in and make sure there's nothing out that you, you know, if you, before you're dealing with something else, I want to make sure that you're dealing with, with, with the things in my heart that need to change. The sixth thing he says is, do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Guys, we live in a world that has temptation. We live in a world where it's easy to fall. It's easy to stumble. We have an enemy that is trying to get us to fall, trying to get us to stumble. But the great news is Jesus has conquered that enemy on the cross. And that's what he did on the cross is he conquered sin and death in our lives. And so we can say, God, keep me from temptation, but deliver me from the evil one. I don't want to do that. I, I'm engaging in this warfare and I'm saying, God, I'm putting my trust in you. Please keep me from temptation. And then finally, the last thing he says is, for yours is the kingdom and, and the power and the glory forever. And this is where we again express our faith that God can handle what we're bringing or we're saying, I trust in your abilities. I trust in your abilities. So. You know, this may seem kind of difficult for you to pray, but let me just show you. This is how I pray this in my life. And then I'm going to let you guys do this on your own. But so I'll say, you know, our Father in heaven, God, I just, I just realize the fact that you and I are a family and that you are looking out for me. And I just thank you so much for that. The second thing, hallowed be your name. God, I just worship you and I praise your name. You are holy. You alone are holy. Jesus, you alone are holy. Your kingdom come, your will be done. God, I just want your will for my life. Today, show me what that means in my life, God. Give me your will. I only want your things to happen in my life because I know that you have the best things for me. The next thing is give us this day our daily bread. God, I trust and I depend on you for everything in my life. I put my trust and I depend on you for this situation that I'm going through. I'm putting it in your hands. Let your will be done. And Lord, and the next thing is forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. God, I just forgive everybody in my life that, that I may be holding on to some bitterness. And Lord, if there's anything in my life that I've done to someone else, that, that you would just show that to me so that I can ask for forgiveness and I can repent of that. The sixth thing, lead us not into temptation, Lord. Today as I walk in this world, keep me from evil so I'm not stumbling in Jesus' name. And then finally, for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. God, I, I know that you are in control of, of these situations as I've given you control for them. So God, I just trust in your abilities right now and I'm expecting good things to happen. See how easy that is to pray? So I encourage you to take the Lord's Prayer, this thing that Jesus has set up for us, and in your own personal walk, in your own time of prayer, to take this, these seven things. And it doesn't, it's not hard to do. You can even just read the Lord's Prayer, take one of the little phrases and just pray that. When I, when I pray, especially when I don't really know what to pray, I'm gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna go to the Lord's Prayer and I'm gonna pray this. So what do you think? Is it that easy for you to do? Do you think that's something difficult? Do you even have the Lord's Prayer, Lord's Prayer memorized? Is that something you've, you've chosen to do in your life? And if not, do you think it's something that you should do? Maybe that would be something that would be a good step for you to take in your walk with God. And uh, what does the Lord's Prayer look like in your life? You know, what are the things I prayed, but, but you know, that was kind of a general prayer. There'd be more specific things if I, if I spent a little bit more time praying through these those things, specific situations in my life. What are those situations like in your life? And then finally, I challenge you to pray through the Lord's Prayer sometime this week. Just take, take a moment out to say, I'm going to pray through the Lord's Prayer, each one of these steps. And I know that your, your prayer is going to be powerful. Your prayer, you're going to feel like a, a greater connection with God when you pray through the Lord's Prayer. Because that's exactly what Jesus said to do, is to pray like this. God's got awesome things in store for you, and he wants you to engage in him with prayer every single day. So I cannot wait to see what that looks like in your life.